energy policy in decades taking shape in the House this week. Congress is starting hearings on global warming. It happens in about 20 minutes. Now, critics say the changes coming out of this hearing will supersize your energy bills. And that is just the beginning of the extra costs that could be coming your way. Uh, this, is, this could be big. They are saying, you know, obviously the Obama administration has said it's not going to raise taxes on anybody but the so-called richest Americans. This is what a lot of Republicans are pointing to when they say that's simply not true, that every American is going to feel the pinch in his or her energy bill. Now, Congressman John Shattuck has been a critic of this legislation from the start. The Arizona Republican sits on the Energy and the Commerce Committee, the panel taking up this climate bill, and he is my guest now. Congressman, good morning to you. How are you? Good to be with you. I'm fine, thanks. Uh, you know, I think uh, people hear, okay, there's an energy bill. Uh, they're going to try to cap da or tra crack down on uh, cap and trade and in, in companies that are polluting the environment, and that's all well and good. But there is a provision in here. Um, well, first, let me start with this. You say this will raise taxes on the average American. Yes, absolutely. There's not any doubt about that. It's really not taxes. What it'll do is raise the cost of everything you buy. Uh, by adding an additional element to the cost of energy in this country, then the cost of everything that requires energy will go up. So the cost of gasoline will go up. The cost of food will go up because you produce food with energy. Uh, literally, the cost of everything every American buys will go up as a result of this legislation because that's exactly what it does. The government is going to charge uh, American businesses a fee for emitting carbon dioxide because they've now determined carbon dioxide is a pollutant. That fee, that extra charge, will add to the cost of everything uh, we buy. Right, because these companies aren't just going to eat those costs. They're going to pass them on to us, as no. they always do. And let me just point out, you're not the only one who feels this way. According to our research, President Obama's director of OMB said that under this cap-and-trade program, these companies would bear most of the costs. Uh, but they, no. but, but it's, they said, but they would then pass them along to their customers in the form of higher prices. So ultimately, they will not bear the costs. Uh, people like, you know, Joe in the middle of, uh, you know, th this country who's working uh, at McDonald's is going to bear this cost. Yeah, absolutely right, Megan. And one of the things that actually angers me is the way that it's being done. It would be one thing if we were to pass these additional costs uh, on to every single American on an equal basis. But that's not being done in this legislation. This legislation is a classic example of powerful interests getting their way. For example, in the current draft bill, one new coal plant is exempted for a period of something close to 25 years, I think, because of a deal that's been cut. And now they're cutting other deals with powerful members whose votes they need to pass the bill. And that member will be able to get a deal where in his district, the steel plant won't be charged these fees, oh, or really? perhaps the coal-fired power plant in his district won't be charged these fees, but in your congressman's district, those fees will be charged, so you might lose your job or your energy costs will go up, but it won't happen in the neighboring uh, congressman's state or district. This is the kind of thing that outrages Americans when they watch Congress at work. Now, to steal a phrase from John McCain, will we know their names? Who's cutting these deals? It's exactly the kind of thing that, I'm sorry, there's a siren going by, so it's hard to hear, but it's exactly the kind of thing that Americans ought to be outraged about. Uh, it is like earmarking, uh, but it's really power brokering. It's the kind of thing that John McCain's been talking about. It's where powerful interests, either a company or a congressman, cut a sweetheart deal and the law doesn't apply Who's evenly across it? the nation. That's how they essentially buy the votes to get the bill passed. Who's behind it? Who's doing it? Do you know? Can you name names? Well, they are the people who want this bill to pass, and I don't know all of their names, uh, but you can find the language that I just referred to about this one plant right in the bill, and I suspect uh, that for uh, going forward, uh, many of the deals won't appear until, as you have seen in the past, like happens on earmarks, until the very, very last minute. Perhaps in the conference committee, they'll sneak in the language that protects certain interests uh, and leave the rest of us hanging out. All right, now I have to ask you this last about this last point before I let you go, and that is apparently there's also a provision in this bill that for the first time will allow anybody, basically, to sue the federal government or to sue these, these energy companies if they consider themselves a victim of global warming. And that and victim of global warming is defined very loosely. It's basically anybody who's, who's coughing or doesn't like their beachfront property anymore because of, because of something having to do with the environment. Is this going to pass? Is this going to be the new law? Oh, I think it will pass. Um, it's a full employment act for lawyers. It empowers every zealot 
uh, and all the lawyers in America to sue, and not just to sue the government. That would be fine if they sued the government. This allows them to sue anyone they allege is a global warming polluter. So uh, they can sue an automobile company, they can sue a steel company, they can sue uh, literally a, a, an electric utility, they can sue anyone that they believe is in violation of this law. It, it is indeed a full employment act for lawyers, and I don't think there's any chance that language will come out absent uh, an outcry from the American public. Wow. And the harm, the only harm you have to show in order to sue is any effect of air pollution, including climate change, currently occurring or at risk of occurring. I don't even know if that'll be held up as constitutional if you're just at risk of getting harmed. You won't have standing to sue, but we'll have to watch it play out if you guys pass this. We're gonna work on getting those names, every, Congressman John Shattuck. Thanks so much for raising the issue. Every who wants to can file those lawsuits. Exactly, it, it's, it's clearly a boon to the trial lawyers. The only debate is whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we appreciate your insights on it, sir. Thanks so much for being with us. You bet. I will name names. You will know their names. You will know their names, and I will make them famous. Make them famous. That was Thank the lines of the been campaign. A it's, been, it's been a long time. Newsheimers. <laughs> hey, she stood up for traditional marriage.